These are only minor illustrations of how sectarianism has plagued the region. Scenes of bloody conflicts based on sectarian clashes between different Islamic sects have become the daily routine in some Middle East countries like Iraq, Syria, and most recently Yemen. In fact, these countries were known for centuries as peaceful and stable countries, where members of different schools of thought lived peacefully together, intermarrying and praying at the same mosques. Conflicts and heated discussions between individuals of different sects widened to threaten many countries, especially as social media sites and the internet have become the fertile ground for discussing differences among Islamic sectors. To face the growing catastrophe and prevent my country from such hideous division, I consider it as my sacred duty to raise my brothers' and sisters' awareness of sectarianism and its fatal effects. For analyzing the current problem and understanding sectarianism thoroughly, I decided to interview Dr. Munir Al-Hadrami from Sultan Qaboos University who is immersed in religious and cultural studies. Okay, when we talk about this uh, matter, we need to go back to history and how it happened. Actually, this issue, I mean, was between big scholars, the different opinions and interpretation of Quran and Sunnah. We are all Muslims, but we have different interpretations, and this is actually allowed in Islam to have different opinions. Then later on, when actually normal people or let's say common people who do not have access to knowledge were involved in this issue the problem started i mean the big problem when i mean the tribulation and the things that we should not i mean uh, as muslims involve ourselves in by killing and attacking others so that this is a, a historical i mean let's say, thing that happened in the past. It started as a political uh, diversion, but later on it evolved to be religious and maybe political. Young people should not involve themselves in such matters. You see, I mean, young people should not involve themselves in matters of, of these differences because these matters will not increase their faith. It will take them away from their faith because they will focus on something they should not focus on. Yeah. Okay, so they should unite. They should just, I mean, forget about these things and they should think about building their country and also increasing their knowledge, their faith in Islam. Because when you pray, you should ask yourself, are you having khushu? Do you concentrate in your prayer? Regardless of your, of your school. Your school actually is guiding you, maybe teaching you how to practice Islam. But as I told you, I mean, they are all doing the same thing. How beautiful it is. When you see individuals from different sectors praying together, working together, and building their country together, regardless of their sectors and belief. This is my message to you, dear brothers and sisters. It is a must that we leave aside the things that differentiate between us and concentrate on how to be closer to each other. We do not need conflicts and controversy. We need to build our country and to make our planet peaceful.